Rated M for Mature. Welcome to the final episode of Playing Dead. I'm your host, AJ Locasio. Today we'll be talking to the directors of episode 5, Sean Ainsworth, Jake Rodkin, and Sean Vanneman. We'll also be talking to the creator of Walking Dead, Robert Kirkman. And we have a special interview with the voice of Lee Everett, Dave Fenoy, right here on Playing Dead. So guys, thank you for being on the show again, and Sean and Jake, you guys have been on the show, but other Sean, uh, you have not been on the show. Can you guys recap, what did you guys do on episode five? Uh, I was the lead cinematic artist, and I co-directed with these two guys. Yep. Uh, I directed some of episode five with these guys, and also I was uh, a designer on the game. That was the writer, and Co did those things, except lead choreography, which was your only charge, and you did quite well. Oh, thank you. So, first question is, did the entire season turn out the way you guys had pictured it, the way you had envisioned this whole thing? I don't think we could have imagined it being as good as it was. You know, it turned I out think, nice. Yeah, but it turned the, out. The story is pretty close to what we talked about, whatever it was, almost two years ago at this point. Yeah, I would say the story moments, everything that happens, everything that Lee and Clementine go through, the big moments are exactly kind of like what we always wanted and then were realized in a like they were realized usually in a better way than what we pictured but yes and that might be because like i mean guys like sean i don't know you can probably speak to this but like i don't know how privy you were to the end before you came on to the project like before you came on episode five did you know how we wanted to end it yeah uh i'd heard things but it see it worried me at the time you know like i had to be convinced that it was a good idea uh, <laughs> which it's true. I was like, we're going to kill the main character? Lame. But then, you know, I was convinced that it was the right move. So the, the fan outcry on Facebook, on Twitter, on uh, YouTube, people crying on and Orkut? screaming. <laughs> on what? <laughs> Orkut. No idea. Okay. But people have been going nuts. And did you guys, I mean, did you envision this sort of crazy uh, emotional outpour, this response? Because it's, I mean, it's huge. I think it's important that you get a fulfilling ending. And I think that was our main goal and it was fulfilling to us, and it was obviously it was enough to where, like, when Sean came onto the project, we had to kind of convince him that this is the right. It was Be the right fulfilled. <laughs> well, that, that it was the right thing to do. And had playtester playtesters said, oh, like, had gone up in arms over it, we probably we would have, have had some thinking to do. Thought at least, about it, yeah. yeah. But they didn't. So, you know, you sort of keep, keep reinforcing the decisions you're making, and try not to get too distracted by how people are going to receive it. Right. Right. You know? Yeah. So, uh, so people were literally filming themselves on the internet, crying, reacting to Lee's death. I mean, what did you guys think about that? Part of the, part of what people are doing when, they, like, if if people started out the game knowing how it was going to end, would they have put their entire playthrough up on YouTube? You know, yeah. it's like because you know you you get a camera in somebody's face and you get to see their actual reactions to things, and if they knew how they were going to be reacting to things, you know, when they set out to do it. Uh, I don't. It's disarming in a way. It's kind of cool to see. So the music of the the, the game was phenomenal. Uh, Jared Emerson Johnson like knocked it out of the park. And uh, the song at the end, which is I can never remember, the, "Take Us Back" mm -hmm. by uh, I don't remember saying Alila Diane. Yeah, that's that's a pretty heavy song. When that rolled up, I was just like, you know, yeah, oh, sad as it was. And then that song happens, and you're just like, you go a little dead inside. Like, what made you made you guys choose that song? It's it's perfect. Yeah, you know, this is it was just a song that was just exactly right. It was exactly what it was. I listened to that song probably 500 times, I don't know. And it's just about wishing you were in a different moment that had come before. Right. You know, and everybody can feel that way. Everybody can, you know, remember what it's like to be a little kid and kind of have nostalgia for their family or lost a loved one. It's just like the most human thing ever. And uh, so uh, Jared's work on the on the game, the, mm -hmm. the score he did for it's amazing. How did you guys work with him? How did that work out? The first thing that we needed to get set down was the art. So we had this picture drawn, and the second thing that we needed to know was what the heck does this thing sound like. So we started talking to Jared, who's been the composer on, I think, every Telltale game, all the way back to the first Bone games they did in like '06. So um, we just started off by him showing up with probably like two or three hundred songs that he had cataloged that he said what is maybe the game sounds like this maybe that's it actually sounds how like we this. found the yeah. tom Waits song that we really like yes yeah it was um, in his his uh yeah his catalog the sound ended up changing just even over the course of the first episode and jared sort of working with us and the directors in the various episodes settled on a lot of like small string section stuff yeah which was sort of one of the big sounds and then it's fun also to listen to the things that show up in the score that i think 
like different directors have different sensibilities. So if you like the score to episode four has a little bit of a different sound, they worked with Jared on that. But also just, I think Jared, Jared always tries to sneak in a little bit more classic zombie than we ask for. And it always ends up working, but like it's all the way down to like the very, very end of episode five when Lee is like dying and it's just horrible. And the, the music in that is just this really subtle, awesome version of the Clementine theme. But then it ends with like the music just sort of goes, <laughs> you just like get this weird like Romero or like John Carpenter's synthesizer just comes in and it's the, it's super subtle and at the same time you're just like oh man this is still a zombie game and like yeah. the little secret bits like that are always my favorite things that show up in the score. The uh, the handcuffs, the beginning of the game Lee's in handcuffs and at the end you have that you know if you choose to do it and he's in handcuffs again. It was just like obviously this must have been a conscious interactive callback. You yeah. choose <laughs> you choose how yeah. Yeah, your closure. You know, uh, it's so funny. Like you want to, I, I think we all want to sit here and say, oh yeah, that was a brilliant. Yeah. Knew that was happening. No, Mark Darren walked into a design yeah. meeting with the idea for handcuffs being part of the puzzle, and then once we had them, we thought of all the different. Like what you do when you make an adventure game, is if you inter, if you introduce an object, you go, okay, we want the player to handcuff the zombie to the thing to to protect Clementine. What are what is everything in this world that the player might also want to handcuff, and then can we let them or not? Generally, you can't. But then we said like, oh, do this, like the door. It's like uh, Clementine. No, that'd be weird. Uh, <laughs> like, and then we're like Lee, and it's like, of course you'd want to handcuff Lee. And then it just had this symmetry. That scene is admittedly symmetry. Festival. Yeah. <laughs> it's not okay. conscious though. You don't feel it when you're going through. It's later yeah. on. You go, oh, wait yeah. a second. And honestly, I that think was the, important. I think I'm, the fact that it's not too clean. No, no, you're right. Like I think like, the fact that it's not too clean is a byproduct of the fact that it wasn't overly planned. Uh, so at, at the end of the game, after the credits, we see Clementine. She's by herself. And we see those two people up on the hill. Um, <clears throat> what made you guys want to leave Clementine alone and in danger? And you know, when you see her, see these figures on the hill, like they're when they s stop. Are they good? Are they right. bad people? Are they people? All these questions you're having, she's having, and I hope you feel like whatever decision she's about to make would have been the decision you would have made. The world of The Walking Dead does not care about you. Like, it does not care that you're a little girl, it doesn't care that you're an old man, it doesn't care that you have a family, it does not care. So to be true to the license, you have to sort of, we have to acknowledge that. Robert, thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Um, so first question, how do you feel about the way the whole season went? How do you feel about how it wrapped? You know, I, it sounds a little cliche, but I, I have to say I, I couldn't be happier. I think that uh, it's, it's a tremendous risk to do anything with The Walking Dead just because, you know, I, I can't be 100% hands-on with everything. So right. uh, I could have never expected the response to be so positive and for the game itself to be so awesome. I mean, I always knew it was going to be good, but it is uh, an incredibly piece of, it, it's an incredible piece of work. And, uh, you know, I, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Did you have any particular feelings on how it, how it went? Spoilers, by the way. Like, did you choose to shoot Lee? Or did you choose to leave, you know, Lee and let him be? Uh, I, I, I like the idea of forcing uh, Clementine to shoot him. Her sick bastard. So that it will prepare her for what she is going to have to do from here on out. I think that uh, it sounds harsh, you know, on the surface. But right. if you think about it, it would be much. Uh, it would be much worse to not prepare her for what's coming to to preserve her innocence in a world where you know that's something that could get her killed and so uh, that was the decision that I made as a, as a writer you obviously would typically craft the story and that's the way it is you know like in the comic you don't get to choose anything like how do you feel about the player having such a huge you know involvement in where it goes I think uh, I think that's a really cool evolution to video games I think that uh, shifting from uh, being told a story while you control actions to uh, controlling the story 
you know, and, and some of the actions aren't necessarily, like, some of the actions are part of the storytelling. Uh, I think it's a really cool transition. I think that uh, it invests people in the game right. uh, a lot more, and uh, giving people that sense that they are actually, you know, altering events in very significant ways, uh, I think, you know, has led to, you know, a good portion of the success of this game. But I think it's a really cool thing to, you know, put that power in the hands of the audience and really have them uh, dictate what their own experience experience is in right. the game. Were you surprised at all at the emotional, the crazy emotional outpouring that's happened as a result of, you know, just the series in general and especially uh, the finale? I mean, there's tons of YouTube videos and uh, some crazy stuff out there. Uh, it's, it's really surprising, I think. I mean, uh, seeing the level that, that it goes to at times is, right. is somewhat... Uh, uh, jarring, but I, I understand it. I mean, it really speaks to the investment that people have in this game, and uh, it, it's really uh, it's really cool. But uh, I still think those guys are all wimps. That's terrible. They're gonna find you now. I don't care. They don't care. <laughs> you call I've, those wimps. I've seen them weeping. I, they're gonna That's find true. me and cry on and me. Cry Come on, on you. Do you have anything you want to say to uh, fans of Telltale's Walking Dead game? Uh, well, I mean, honestly, I. Thank you so much. I mean, fans of any iteration of Walking Dead, like I really appreciate uh, anybody like giving it a shot. I know that, uh, you know, trying new things is very difficult, but, uh, you know, giving this game a shot, uh, trying to dive in, um, you know, playing it, uh, uh, the the reaction, like everybody going online, talking about it. I mean, it's all just, you know, absolutely awesome. And, uh, you know, it makes it all worthwhile. So, so that's really cool. Uh, it's really cool to know that people care about this. I mean, this is something that I've lived with for a really long time. It's something that I've poured my heart and soul into for almost as long as I can remember. And so to know that uh, people care about it, people enjoy it, uh, you know, it, you know it, it's really gratifying and, you know, makes me uh, able to justify the long hours and stuff like that. So that's awesome. Awesome. All right, cool. Thank you so much for talking to us today. I'm out. Leave. Thanks. <laughs> uh, oh, wait a minute. I work here. You know, after, after this whole season, what is it you guys, you know, want to bring in uh, season two? What do you want to take away? From, I mean, there's so much, but what do you want to take away from season one that you can, you know, add to season two? You know, one thing this that... Zombies. I, yeah, zombies, zombies, zombies will return, start. I think. Zombies confirmed, Rich? Zombies confirmed for season two? Okay, yeah. We're going to cool. have zombies in season two. Uh, Lee? Uh, Lee's corporeal form uh, didn't disintegrate. So it will continue <laughs> to exist in the world somewhere. Yeah. In the first chunk of the game, the first half of the season, there was a lot of like really small, uh, like tactile interaction, uh, taking your handcuffs off. Especially there was stuff in St. John's Dairy. There were you know things that were just felt really more like tiny in the details. Right. And uh, I'd like to bring some of that stuff back. I think the, the nature of the story in season one becomes you know as soon as like. The idea of getting off the mainland is on the table, and especially once Clementine goes missing. The scope of, of what you're doing gets yeah, bigger and bigger. Yeah, the scope yeah. gets yeah. bigger, so we kind of got away from some of that smaller detail stuff. The idea of, like, picking up fine little things. That's why I actually like the end. The end is back to that small scope, which I like. Yeah, well, you know, the other thing about episode five, especially, is that, you know, you're not focused on details. You just want to get to Clementine. Yeah. And so, you know, it didn't make sense as much, but I agree that, you know, it's cool. It's when it feels the most like a real human problem, which feels like The Walking Dead to me, and it's also just a thing that I don't think you do in a lot of games, especially not in zombie games. Or usually, you're usually not like using a screwdriver to usually unscrew a, bolt. a crowd of yeah. right. <laughs> it's uh, and it's 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 cool that we're given the opportunity to put to do it, make a game where that is somehow compelling to play. So uh, character design is huge for this game because you have to. I mean, they're. The, the crux of the game, they are the character. Those. Yeah, you have a lot of characters in this game, and obviously it's the most important aspect of the game. Can you guys talk about what, uh, you know, what went into the design, the, the animation, the kinds of choices you guys made? With The Walking Dead, I think we looked back at a lot of the stuff we'd done before and tried to, and tried to learn a lot about it. Or we, 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 really wanted to, we really wanted to try and strike a balance between someone who's relatable and looks real, but at the same time looks like they sort of come from a from the world of the comic book and also from a, a world where you can stylize it a little bit. We definitely went for this look that emphasized emphasized eyes and emphasized like basically this part of a face. Right. Um, and if you, if you pay attention, you'll notice that everyone actually has really big weird eyes, which somehow hides itself nicely inside of the style. But it, it, it was entirely done to give our animators and our cinematic artists the ability to create, to just push 
the the mood and the emotions that the characters were in way further than you could if we were if we were locked into a really realistic look and right. um, I don't know you actually you actually made Lee act in the game so you can yeah. talk about it a little bit. Well, it's bit. especially important when you know to have really expressive faces when somebody needs to go like they do in The Walking Dead from really angry to sad to happy to you know there's just so many different uh, emotions that people go through in these games and having a really expressive face helps enormously with making that read, especially when we do some of the more subtle stuff where people are not actually talking, you know? Like, that's a lot harder to do. Um, so it's, it's really nice to have somebody who can, you can just look at them and know if they're mad. Right. Uh, Dave Finoy and uh, Melissa Hutchinson were amazing as uh, Lee and Clementine, respectively. Uh, but the rest of the cast, uh, how did you guys go about uh, assembling that team? They're incredible. It was just really, really, really tough. But when you found somebody who understood what we were trying to do and uh, just brought something extra to the lines, it was m like magic. Right. Um, Sissy Jones, especially, with She Plays Katja. And to send out a casting call for you are 40 and from Belgium, but have been living in the United States, married to like a fisherman for the past 12 <laughs> years. Right. So your your accent's kind of fallen off. Nikki Rapp was actually probably my favorite, like most awesome VO surprise because yeah. Nikki Rapp played um, Nikki Rapp played Lily, but Nikki Rapp also played Lily in, the, Psychonauts. in Psychonauts, the tiny, the little kid who's the love interest of Raz, and then she also played Morgan Le Fay in Tales of Monkey Island, and those roles are just really sort of bubbly and really frantic and also just three times more high-pitched. Like, she's right. playing... She often gets cast. She cast often, yeah. Uh, Gavin Hammond played Kenny in his, his stuff in episode three. He's amazing, is ridiculous. actually. In studio, he's incredible because he comes in and he's just, oh, I'm Gavin, and he sounds like Northern California Gavin. And then he's like, you're out ready to do this? And you're like, whoa, <laughs> Kenny! Like, he just bring. it just comes out. He just, it's like a weird robot switch for him. You don't think about it. You just don't think about it as like, oh, yeah, voice actor. You know what I mean? Like, you don't think... No, they're think, just people. Yeah, yeah, like, I mean, obviously, when I heard Lee, I was like, Hulu guy, you know what I mean? But as soon as I had that thought, I immediately went into like, okay, now he's Lee. I'm a father, and I just put myself in the situation of how would I be with my daughter? in some horrific situation. Lee strikes me as a person who is not perfect, but is trying to do the best he can and has taken on, uh, I call it God's work, in taking care of this child. That alone redeems him for me. When I look at the whole performance, um, I feel very good about it, and I, I think I was able to get a performance that touches people because the writing is very good. I was having lunch with Sean Vanneman and we were talking about uh, black actors and stereotypes and finding uh, voices and one of the things he was saying is I'm just looking for somebody real. There are going to be some things in my voice that um, kind of let you know I'm black without me trying to put on a black thing and you know make you think I'm black. You know, that, we don't have to do that. How did you feel when you first found out that Lee was going to die? I was pissed off. And uh, I'm still not completely happy with the lead character in the game. You can't kill me off. But as an actor, it gave me some opportunities to emote in ways in a game that I never get. There are scenes uh, in episode five where there are actual tears. I felt a real sense of loss, and not that I was dying, but that I would not be there. Uh, I, even just talking about it now, I, it, it, it kind of gets to me. Uh, I, I've read some of the comments that uh, players have made about themselves playing the game and, and really the game making them face who they are and the choices they make in this game and translate that into life. So uh, I, I really think uh, this is the gaming world growing up. It's really about life and choices. What kind of person are you really? So uh, I've got some stats here from the finale. 70.5% uh, of people chose to cut Lee's arm off after being bitten. Uh, I did. Because I was like, screw that, I want to live. So I yeah, had chance. him cut it off. That was a painful scene. Like, as I was going through that, I was just like, oh, one more. Like, I've never, I mean, obviously I've seen 
shows Obviously, where I've it seen happens. arms removed. I've seen arms removed. Happens all the time. But no, I've seen, you know, we've all seen shows where someone has to do something like that or there's some sort of amputation. But that was the first time where I was just like, you know, your gag reflex is going because you're doing it to yourself, essentially. But you were you're playing, making it happen. You were playing with Lee alone. Alone, yeah. Which too. means that you cut your own arm off. Yeah. yeah. If you have people with you... They hold you down. They'll hold you down and do it, but it's still, it's still gross. Unless you're with Ben. Yeah. When arguing with Kenny in the attic, 72.9% of players lost their temper. Uh, that makes sense. I think is weird, honestly. I kind of was just like, anytime I had a chance to make Kenny my friend, I went for it. Did you end up throwing that bust at him, or did you, did you back off and let Kenny... No, I totally backed off. I was just like, you know, I just yeah. let him, you know... I think, you know, I, that's one of those things... One of those uh, like game design things where if you give the player the opportunity to do something, they're a lot of times in the moment going to do it. Right. And that matched up with Lee's uh, emotions at that time. Yeah, I think so we, that, we wanted people to be a little We wanted people, right to, we want people to be getting a little hot right yeah. there. Yeah, so that makes sense. I wouldn't do it. Wouldn't play any of your games. Well, it's fine. Well. <laughs> that's fine. Kenny did. 58.9% gave up all their weapons when asked by Clem's captor. Uh, yeah. Let's, uh, I did. You were afraid. I was scared. I wanted you to. You didn't have to. You could have kept scared. it. Yeah, you could have kept man. it. I was worried that guy was going to do something, though. Yeah, I don't think we knew. Yeah, we, we didn't have. But I liked the way that scene played out. Yeah. Where yeah. he's just like, "Give me your stuff." He's like, "I don't have anything." I think that Give was. Give me your stuff. <laughs> that was. <laughs> it was one of the places where I think we were, a little more sort of, cheeky with that than we usually are. Where it was like, if you choose to try and be a hard ass and keep your weapon, you have the opportunity to use it on the stranger, but. He just knocks it away, whereas if you do let yourself get disarmed, it gives Clementine the opportunity to pick it up and thwack him in the back of the shoulder with it. Yeah. The best one is when players do nothing, though, and <laughs> Clementine just walks up and goes, <laughs> and hits him, hits him in the head, like looking at you like, what? Okay, uh. So during the fight we were just talking about with Clem's capture, 56.4% uh, of players needed Clem to come to their aid uh, instead of just doing it themselves. It's hard to kill that dude. Because you're killing him with your bare hands. That was, yeah. Or some cases we with wanted your bare it hand. to be hard. Really hard. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So. 62% of players told Clem to shoot Lee rather than keep the bullet and walk away, uh, which I think is weird. You were a walk away? Yeah, it was just like, you're a no, You were no. in the minority of stats on this whole episode, it I'm, seems like, maybe? I'm a minority, what uh, can I say? You know, it's funny, it depends. Everybody, that's, generally when I meet somebody who's played the game, that's the first thing I ask them, what did you do at the end and why? And everybody has a different, not necessarily, obviously there's only two things you can do, but everybody has a different why. Right. Everybody, it's always... Some people are practical save the bullet, as the, the cue card says. But a lot of people didn't even think about that. It's like, I didn't want to put her through that needlessly. Things right. like that. Uh, that was a lot. It's intense for, I mean, it's Clementine. We've been watching her go then through every, this you whole know, thing. My mom's like, well, she's going to have to do it eventually anyway. Right, right. Like, thanks, Mom. <laughs> I'll remember that next time you're <laughs> chained to a radiator on the verge of death. This <laughs> <laughs> Your mom shot Lee? Yeah. What a mom. I know. Okay, so we've got fan questions. Hmm. Hi, fans. Cool. Johnny asks, I thought the soundtrack was pretty damn awesome, and I wonder if it is ever going to be released on CD or download so that I can buy it. We are totally working on that, because you are not the only one who feels that way. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, so more soon. So William asks, how many times have the voice actors and devs cried in the making of this game? By the way, best game ever made, I cried three times. Sweet. I'm glad cool. that he's counting how many times he cried. <laughs> yeah, just the idea of like, of like, just like, <laughs> hopefully he's got like the, the bus driver like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we keep those around. People get emotional. Yeah. I know people have come up to me in the studio and been like, man. That's generally what that means. I, I don't. I don't get a people, man. I don't get a cry count, but I get a man. Yeah. I heard that at the end of the season, Dave and Melissa were in a place for sure. I don't Dave, know. Dave definitely but. was in well in studio when he was recording the jewelry store stuff. So, our friend Gray asks, uh, did you guys approach this game with the need to tell a good story or with the idea that you're giving a player a space to tell their own story? Oh, uh, you know, that's a really great question because I think that gets to like some sort of like very philosophical decisions people make in game design. And I will say, like, with this game, it is co-tell a great story. Like, we are going to tell kind of... We're going to actually tell a lot of different stories, but then work with the player to sort of craft their own story. So do you guys have any parting messages to the fans? Anything you want to say uh, now that we're wrapped up season one and uh, before season two? Thank you. Seriously. Thank you for playing this video game. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you again. Thank you for uh, doing all this. Thank you for the season. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next time on season two. Bye. <laughs> Uh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much guys for watching this season of Playing Dead. We'll see you all soon. And now I leave you with some words from the Telltale team. 
Hey everybody, I know I just was probably in that video you watched, but I just want to say thanks again. Uh, it's been great, and um, I don't know, it's been uh, an excellent ride, and you guys made it happen, so thank you very much. I just wanted to say a quick thanks to all of you people out there for making this uh, an exciting uh, year for us, and, and, uh, and for the 82% of you who did not kill Andy St. John, good for you for keeping your humanity. Uh, all our fans are amazing, but I wanted to give a special shout out to all the uh, Easter egg hunters. So anybody who found Duck Duckageddon in episode 3, or Powerful Stash in episode 5, you guys rule. Hey, so I was responsible for uh, Lee's death, and I just wanted to apologize for making everybody cry, and it's gonna, it's gonna be okay. I'm really happy that everybody loves that scene, I'm really happy that everybody loves the game, so thanks for playing. Thanks for high-fiving Duck. This is our fan art wall. This is a collection of fan art that we've been finding throughout the web. The game is so grim that it's their way of dealing with the horrible things that happen to some of these people. Yeah, they, they want things to be a happily ever after story so much that they uh, create their own alternate reality. There's a lot of cool fan fiction out there in fan art that kind of depicts that. But there is some that's still very real, like, you know, the St. John's Brothers stuff going on. Yeah, so. but then, you know, down here, Kenny saving Ben with his winged mustache. Well, it shows the uh, the give and take between fan and developer. The fact that we inspire them to make this fan art, and they inspire us through the fan art to continue to make great games. I think it's, it's a great cycle. So we worked really hard on The Walking Dead, and we did it for you guys. Uh, but to be honest, there were times when things got really hard, when we were tired, when we were exhausted. And in those times, all we had to do was go to our forums or read online uh, all the stuff you guys were saying about the previous episode or all the speculation for the next episode, and it really energized us, it energized the whole team. So thanks for the energy. Hey, fans of The Walking Dead, all right. Thank you so much uh, for doing the season with us because uh, without you it does not exist and uh, without your your feedback and uh, what you love and what you hate and, and everything else uh, we're always watching and uh, it helps the games get better so thanks for for uh, for enjoying it and thank you for supporting Telltale uh, and uh, glad it was fun for everyone yeah thanks thanks for downloading thanks for trying an episodic game thanks for many of you trying your first Telltale game we hope you really enjoyed it. We're looking forward to making more for you. Season 2 is on its way. And uh, thanks again.